What is up ladies and gentlemen, we're back here for yet another awesome fishing video and in today's video I'm going to do a little bit some, something a little bit different than what I've never done before. One, I'm fishing right next to a highway. There is a highway right here so I'm sorry if the audio at some point is not at some points is not very good because there are a lot of cars coming um, and it's right after school for me it is a solid like probably 430 uh, 445 almost actually uh, and uh, today I'm gonna be going over kind of how I approach a new body of water I've never fished here before it's actually right next to like a uh, an electronics company um, and I went up there asked them if I could fish they said of course um, and it's actually a public uh, a, or a city owned property or own, like pond the water is city owned so I can fish it um, or hopefully I can but um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be since I've never fished here before I thought it'd be appropriate on uh, to do a video on how I approach a new body of water and it's great for you guys because you guys can see I'm gonna kind of think out loud um, and share my thoughts with you guys so then you guys obviously can take that and apply it to the ponds that you guys are fishing. So um, so pretty much what I did was last night um, I went online, <coughs> I went on Google Maps and I was looking for ponds to fish. You know I was looking for ponds to fish that were relatively close to my school so I could come here and not waste a whole bunch of gas um, and make a video and go home you know so um, so I found this one and what you find online is can very can be very key obviously it's not always the most up-to-date but I saw that this pond was fairly muddy um, and it looked fairly dark didn't look very clear um, except the only thing you could see on the online was like a little grass line um, and there's actually a little grass line that goes out like like when I'm talking grass line it's like mats that kind of thing um, it's like it looks like it goes like four or five feet out from the bank so that's very key into the baits that I pick out because now that I'm here and it actually looks very muddy um, I can I can see that I picked the right lures and so the lures that I picked excuse me for today's video is one a black and blue chatterbait now I use a lot of black and blue for muddy water because uh, it stands out and a chatterbait because it also gives off lots of vibration that's my moving bait and why you might say a moving bait and that's actually what I'm going to start off with today is because when you come to a new pond, you want to try to find fish. You know, you don't want to waste your time throwing a jig. Now, if you've been there quite a few times and you know relatively where the fish are, relatively where uh, they congregate, you know, you can start off with a shaky head like I've got tied on. But since I don't know really where the fish congregate and hold out, hold and hang out, um, I need to find that so that's why I have a moving bait on now if your water is clear you could throw like a bluegill color or a shad color um, I do have both of those colors in my backpack but like I said looked online looked muddy so I matched the water clarity with my bait and made it a moving style bait uh, to where I could one cover lots of water and two find those fish by covering lots of, lots of water and walking around the pond. So um, you guys will see that today on the GoPro. Next, the next bait, like I said, was a shaky head. This guy right there, that is a spot remover shaky head. And the reason why I have that on is once you find those fish, you want to kind of slow down and fish that area over well. If there's lots of rocks, you want to be able to cast uh, on different points of where that rock pile is. And that kind of thing you want to be able to flip on different uh, around different areas of trees and that kind of thing you don't have to have a spinning rod you could have you could have put a, a Texas rig on you could put a drop shot on you know you could you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a shaky head you could have put a Ned rig on you know um, so then I kind of matched that and what I saw online going along with the dark dark water clarity um, I kind of matched that to my plastics so what I've got today are some Guggen baits. We've got some Junebug, which is great muddy water color. It's getting close to a black and blue. Kind of drop those down. 
We've got the Kraken Crawl and Baby Blue. Oh, the June Bug was a uh, Bandito Bug. Kraken Crawl and Baby Blue, that's a pretty natural color, but you can also use it in muddy water. Um, and then I brought some uh, Slim Shake Worms. Uh, these are on Alabama Crawl. Um, so they're not, I'm, they're not obviously the best muddy water color, but that's the only, I wanted to try out the Slim Shake Worm. I've only tried it out once on a wacky rig, didn't have any luck, but I wanted to try it out on a shaky head, and that's the only color in the Slim Shake Worm I had, so that's kind of why I brought that. Um, so now that you guys know why I picked the baits, again, like I said, found the pond online, looked at the water clarity just from online, from outer space obviously and saw that it looked fairly muddy and so obviously you whenever you get to a new pond you want to start off with some moving base to try to find those fish like I said before try to find that area where they're congregating at um, and where they're not where they're bunched up at and then you can get the shaky head that's why I have that along brought that along and you can also I also brought my Texas rig stuff along if I, in case I wanted to flip heavier stuff around um, and then you can cast and really slow down and work that area over good so other than that I'm gonna take up these these rods hopefully I'm gonna be able to catch some fish like I said I've never fished here before so I don't even know if there's fish here uh, just on the side of the highway so and that I'm gonna put the camera up in the car and get to fishing Alrighty guys, well, um, I have switched up chatterbait colors because the one I just had, the black and blue one, well, it uh, just kind of flew off my line, you know, um, I'm not really sure what happened, it just kept going a little bit farther, so I'm not really sure, like I said, what happened there, but I switched over to this imitator baits white chatterbait imitator baits bladen jig and white um and uh white and black are white chartreuse and black are kind of like a are good good kind of muddy water colors they're nice and bright and you can see them you can see them pretty good in in muddy water so hopefully i'll be able to get a bite using this bad boy but yeah, just kind of upset that I cast that one off because the chatter, the black and blue chatterbait I had before this one down in Florida, I had also cast off. I don't know what's going on here. Alrighty, guys, we are getting down to the pond right now. Ooh, and I am already seeing little fish. You know, I'm gonna stand right here and see if I can't pick off a couple that are right next to this little drainage thing right here but we just got down here at the pond I'm already seeing fish which is a very, very promising thing and uh, yeah a little this is actually a pond behind some houses and uh, well I'm already seeing promising signs so hopefully we'll be able to turn that into some fish catches Alrighty guys, well I am getting off the water now, make sure that's locked. Um, and uh, yeah, so I know you guys didn't really see me catch any fish and actually I haven't caught, I've been fishing quite a bit lately. Um, as you guys could tell like on my Instagram uh, through my stories, but I just haven't been able to connect with fish. I don't know if I'm fishing places where there's no fish or something um, but I have n I've been fishing a lot but I haven't been catching a lot of fish um, so I really need to figure out what these fish are doing um, they're they're kind of in that funky stage of like 
being out in the middle, I guess you could say, and then kind of like they're in the stage of being out in the middle and then like pre-spawn. You know, it's kind of like a, a weird stage when they don't, I guess, bite a whole lot. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm hoping uh, I will have some good videos coming for you guys, especially with the spawn. Um, and if you guys haven't picked up your Imitator Baits bed jig, um, the all-white jig, you guys can go on there. We've still got them available, and you guys can still use my code LMB10 and get 10% off your order. So go check that out. If you guys haven't already, get hooked up for the get ready for the spawn um, if it hasn't already hit you yet. So, um, other than that, I, th I hope you guys could take some of these tips um, that I gave y'all today. Um, like I said, I'm sorry I didn't catch any fish, um, but I'm, I'm definitely going to keep this pond on my map um, and come back here with the top water. Um, Maybe like later this week. I don't know. They might not even. They might not be moved up yet this week. So I might be coming back next weekend or ne not next week, but the week after that. So because um, then around that time they should be spawning. So um, and I should be able to get some good topwater bites. So I hope you guys could take some of these tips away from this video and apply them to how you fish ponds or even lakes for that matter. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next episode of LMB Nation. Peace, guys.